Big f***ing deal, Charles. You took a bumper off. Cool story, bro. Let's check this out. It has been months and months and months since I have updated you guys on the GTI. And the big reason is nothing's happened. It has just been chilling here on the lift. Not quite like this because I've taken a few things off. We did it! But just kind of hanging out, waiting for me to get my butt back in gear on this project. As you guys know, took a little break for the R32, took a little break for the Mark V, and now it's time to get back on this old girl and get her back on the road. Transmission is still out, I'm trying to fine tune and dial in exactly what I'm gonna do there. But while I do that, there's a ton of loose ends that I never wrapped up from that initial build. I didn't want to button everything up perfectly just to have to take some things back apart in order to fix issues that I knew for sure were going to come up. All right, so time to get the front end off the GTI. It's all unbolted, simply just gotta pull it away and hopefully I got everything unplugged. Only one way to find out. That is to use my eyeballs and actually look at it. All right, before we get into where it's at now, let's recap a little bit for those of you that are new or since it's been 100,000 years, some of you guys may have forgotten. Picked this car up right about three years ago. Uh, the car was in pretty good shape. It did lead a little bit of a rough life maintenance wise, but nothing that we couldn't overcome. Initially did a crack pipe because it was leaking with a thermostat housing too, and then found out that actually the head gasket was leaking. Not the end of the world because this was a good opportunity to go ahead and do new timing chains, give the cylinder head a refresh, and a handful of other things, replace all the gaskets and junk too. Well, about mid-refresh of the cylinder head and engine block, I decided, let's turbocharge it, which was still a great choice in my opinion. Sold my Mark 1 VR6 to fund the turbo build on this, turbocharged the car, got it all back together, everything was happy, healthy. Then it was time to start backing up doing things like suspension work. We got coilovers on it. All the bushings have been redone. Of course, you guys saw painted or powder coated a ton of stuff underneath the hood in order to make it nice and pretty because that's what I wanted. After, oh, 1,000, 1,500 or so miles, I went ahead and downed the car because the heater core blew on one of those very early drives and it was winter and no one wants to drive a car with no heat in the wintertime. That was terrible. So did that heater core, refoamed the HVAC box entirely put all the stuff back together, put new carpet in it when I did that, and also pulled the transmission so we could figure out what that transmission issue was. I did bend one clutch fork uh, and also ended up with some clutch issues. The guys at BFI, Black Forest Industries, told me, Charles, stage two is not enough clutch for this much power, which should be teetering on the 300 wheel horsepower. So we're going to upgrade to stage three, going back together. Now it's sitting here like it is with the front end off and the core support off and everything supported by a cardboard box or this really sweet bench holding up the engine because I want to do a few things. I want to install that oil pressure gauge, which guys, let's be honest, I should have done that before I first started the car up, but we're going back together with it to get that installed as well as fixing some oil leaks. I have oil leaking from the oil filter housing. Not terribly surprised because I spent a whopping 11 or $12 on the cheapest one I could find on Rock Auto. So we'll be going back together with something a little more substantial and hopefully that won't leak. We're also due for an oil change. So this is a great time to get the oil sample collected so we can send off for testing if I decide to do that. Not only that, I'll probably drop the oil pan and just inspect it, make sure we don't have any metal, uh, like serious metal contamination inside the oil pan. We'll take the filter out and we'll open it up and make sure there's nothing unhappy in there as well, since we have to take it all apart anyway. Also found that I have a coolant leak. Ugh, a coolant leak coming from the fan switch in the radiator. Really easy fix, about 12 bucks. I'll probably end up actually taking this whole assembly off. As you can see, I got just enough room to stick my hand in there and get that oil pressure uh, gauge set up installed. And if we need to do anything else, we'll probably end up having to pull the radiator and condenser, which is fine because the AC is not hooked up anyway. Speaking of AC, we need to get that all dialed in as well as the charge cooler piping. I really only had that stuff mocked up. It was held on with zip ties I, because again, I wanted to quality check all the work that we did. This time going back together with it, we'll properly secure the charge cooler. We'll properly secure the AC lines and get those exactly where I want because there was some interference over on this side with the AC lines and the charge cooler piping. As I'm sitting here filming this, I'm noticing we also have to put this turbo blanket back on. I blame Jason from Engineering Explained. 
because he made me take it back off for that video that we shot earlier this year. Also going back together with it, I'm going to be doing the Jetta front end swap. So new hood, new headlights, and new center grill. A lot of you guys have been asking me about why I'm doing the Jetta swap. One, I like it. I think it looks really cool on the Mark III. I scored some brand new OE headlights before I left the dealership for like $30 a piece, and I got the hood and grill for free. So why not have some flexibility with it? I'm also going to be looking into new bumper covers front and rear because these were trashed, just trashed when, uh, when I got the car. And I've had to cut the crap out of the front bumper in order to make the charge cooler fit. So I'll finish using the front bumper, use that as a template for a new, probably a Euro texture top bumper, which I like, I think it looks really cool as well, especially on white cars. It also seems like I have a bit of a power steering fluid leak at the power steering rack, so we'll have to dive in and investigate that a little bit more. With the transmission out, that actually becomes pretty easy, so we'll do that before putting the transmission back in so there's a little bit more room to work. I'm also actually looking at sourcing, probably from Auto House, a new, to me anyway, transmission so I can get it back together and get the car on the road and not feel rushed to get mine rebuilt. As you guys probably saw that last video, uh, we took the trans apart, a couple of gears that are questionable, probably a great time for new synchros. I have a limited slip I'd like to install in it, which was kind of the genesis for taking it out and taking it apart. In addition to that, I think this would be a really great opportunity to spend some time and energy to either powder coat the case or at least treat the case and get it nice and clean to match what the engine looks like. I also have a new front crossbeam that we're going to be installing. That's a really cool setup from Fabulous Manufacturing. It takes these two pieces, removes them, and it's one solid piece. I'll be doing a video showing you how to install that. I have way more stuff removed than you need to, to install that, but that should be a good time. I'm a little bummed though, because I worked really hard to get these bushings in this front crossbeam. They're a pain in the butt, and now I'm just gonna be taking that out and putting something different in, but the piece is really cool, so it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Once those handful of things are done, we're gonna be doing the front brakes. I got all new calipers, rotors, and everything. I've had those since like Christmas time. We'll finally get those put back on, get new fluid in, figure out what we're gonna do with the rear brakes. After that, we should be done for a while, you know, just in time for it to be winter time. But for real, I think we'll be able to get this car back together pretty darn soon and back on the road and hopefully get it dynoed, which is something I'm kind of bummed that I haven't had uh, the opportunity to do yet. So a lot of fun stuff coming. I know it's been a long time since we've heard anything about the Mark III, but that's just how projects go. Sometimes they're awesome and you're all in. Sometimes you're like, I don't want to work on this crap. But I thank you guys for keeping asking me about it because that keeps me motivated to get back to work. Also saw a ton of really cool Mark III's at Treff Punk, and uh, that's motivating as well to see cars that are, you know, driving on the road instead of sitting on the lift at the shop. So with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Questions, comments, drop them down below. You like the video, hit that thumbs up button. And the question of the day, what are you most excited about to see on the GTI next? All right guys, that's it, I'm out. Bye bye.